Hello and welcome to the editorial analysis of the Hindu. Today we shall be discussing the editorial of the 6th of March. So coming to the first article, 50 years apart, the story of two OIC fiascos. Now the context here is with regards to the recent invite which was given to India's finance minister by the Organization of Islamic Cooperation for the finance minister's meet and this invite was as a guest of honor. So this is something that is being viewed as a great achievement for India. It is a matter of pride for India is what is being called by a certain eclan of society. But after this particular meet, largely it has been criticized as this has resulted in a lot of diplomatic humiliation and diplomatic insult for India. So this editorial is about that. Now coming to the issues which have been discussed, the first issue is with regards to India's history with OIC. Now, India has had a history with OIC. The Organization for Islamic Cooperation, if you remember, we had discussed in the past that this was something that was set up in the year 1969. And time and again, what has happened is that India has, India has had a belligerent relation with the OIC. First and foremost, you should know that in the year 1969 itself, India wanted to join the OIC. And this was something that was denied to India. Also, India was not allowed to attend the inaugural session of the OIC, which at that point of time took place in Rabat in Morocco. So this is what is India's history. Also, vis-a-vis -vis Kashmir, the resolutions passed by OIC have been anti-India. So that is also some bitter aspect in the history. Next, what is important is India's Muslim population. Now, you should know that India has the third largest Muslim population in the entire world. And this organization, which is the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, calls itself the voice of the Muslim people, Muslim countries. It largely comprises of or majority countries in the OIC are Muslim dominated countries. So that is why India seems, India always felt that it should be represented in the OIC because it has such a large Muslim population. So that is what has been highlighted here. Next, what has been analyzed is the principle of secularism. Now, you should know that India is a secular country and India follows this idea of secularism, secularism, which is very much close to India. But the issue is that OIC is a regional organization. And for India being a secular country, it is contrary to India's basic ideology to join an organization which is based on a religious identity. And that is what has been highlighted here, that this kind of a association is something that is not welcome in a country which is democratic and which is secular. So this is one important analysis that India should not associate with the OIC. Though India today is associating with the OIC for its primarily economic reasons, OIC has expanded beyond its, its particular religious identity, but still it continues to identify itself as a Muslim organization. And for this reason, it's, India should not associate. Not only it being a Muslim organization, the editorial is discussing that even if there is an organization which identifies itself as a Hindu organization or a Christian or a Buddhist organization or a Sikh organization, in either of that case, India should not associate. So that is something that has been highlighted. Next, what has been analyzed here is the reasons for Pakistan's denial for India's entry. Now, as I mentioned, in the year 1969, India was refused entry into the OIC. Now, this was largely because of Pakistan's objections to India's entry. Now, an analysis has been given that why was Pakistan so much against India's entry? The primary reason for Pakistan being against was the fact that Pakistan's entire creation was based on the idea that Muslims of India require a separate nation. So if Pakistan was to be made a part of, if India was to be made a part of OIC, then definitely this would contradict the theory that Pakistan was basically formed upon. So there was an ideological difference. Another thing that was important at that point of time was that Pakistan was very much close to the Arab monarchies. And this is something that continues till date. This is largely because of the reason that Pakistan assures military support to Arab monarchies, which they will any time need to defend their monarchy rule in their particular country. So that is why Pakistan becomes important for them. Next, what is important was that at that point of time, Pakistan was a part of an organization called CENTO. This was the Central Treaty Organization and consisted of Pakistan and several other Muslim countries. And these, this was an organization that was largely anti-Soviet and pro-US. At that point of time, there was an alignment of two countries. It was a cold war that was taking place. So at this, this one particular organization was largely pro-US. And this is what resulted in a high clout of Pakistan in the OIC at that point of time, which resulted in OIC withdrawing its 
invitation to India as a member. So that is what is something about historical aspects. Next, what has been discussed is the recent for reasons for the recent invite for India. Now, if India has not had a good and cordial relation with the OIC, then what are the reasons for this recent invite? The reasons are primarily India's growing economic and political stature, especially in the international arena. Also, opportunities that India is providing due to its expanding economy and its technologically skilled workforce are something that are attracting the Arab countries towards India. And it is for this reason primarily that this invite was something that was extended to India's foreign minister. Now, there are some issues of concern which have happened, which have resulted in the diplomatic humiliation to India. What are these issues? Now, in the aftermath of this particular meeting, there was a declaration that came up. This is the Abu Dhabi declaration. Now, what has happened in this declaration is that there has been no acknowledgement of India's foreign minister being invited. This is something that has come as a matter of embarrassment. Another thing is that there was a resolution on Kashmir which was passed in this particular declaration. And in this particular resolution, they have called, they have used words like Indian terrorism in Kashmir. And they have condemned Indian terrorism in Kashmir and they have called it atrocities and human rights violation. So this is something that is not in a good taste for India. Calling Indian terrorism in Kashmir is something that is extremely irritating for India. It's an irritant to India. And that is what has been highlighted. Next, what is important is that this entire meet did not even once criticize the Pulwama attack. Rather, it appreciated Pakistan for returning the Indian Air Force officer safely as a gesture of goodwill. So these are some matters of concern which have happened in the recent meet and this is what has resulted in the diplomatic humiliation. Next, what has been analyzed here is vis-a-vis -vis India's association with the OIC. Now, the editorial is discussing that the association, association itself is something that is questionable. Also, what is being questioned is that should the Indian minister have accepted the OIC's invite now, especially when it is known that in the past, OIC has never passed a resolution in the favor of India. Rather, OIC has always, over the past many years, favored Pakistan and passed anti-Kashmir India statements vis-a-vis -vis the Kashmir issue. So, in context of all of this, what becomes important is that India relooks its association with the OIC. So, that is the entire analysis of this editorial. Though an opinion might, which we can draw, is that definitely an economic association is something that is welcome. The Prime Minister is taking a lot of efforts to have a good West Asian association. And in that context, OIC becomes important. But definitely the stand that it has taken on Kashmir is something that is not in good taste for India. And another opinion is that it is being expected by India, it is being perceived by India that Pakistan has lost its cloud, clout in the OIC. But clearly, this is not something that has happened. Rather, the leopard has not changed its spots, as has been mentioned in this editorial, is the final analysis of this particular article. It is an important one. Coming to the next article, life without GSP. Now, the context here is with regards to United States of America withdrawing the generalized system of preferences to India. That is what is the full form of GSP. Now, this GSP is largely a preferential trade term. This allowed for some duty-free export of products from India into US. So, this was something that was in the interest of India. Now, this GSP program sets zero tariffs for certain goods from a set of approximately 121 developing countries to foster trade and economic development in these countries. Now, in India, approximately dollar 5.6 billion of trade was what was being done under this GSP and this made India the largest GSP beneficiary in US. So the US is now had for some time back had called for reviewing India's status under GSP under those 121 developing countries and now US has finally decided that it will withdraw the GSP privileges that India is getting. So some issues have emanated in, in this aftermath of this particular development. The first issue is with regards to the long trade standoff. Now, you should know that in the trade is something that is a major irritant between India-US relation. And this standoff is something that has been a long one. First and foremost, import tariffs on steel and aluminium is something that was imposed by US. Also, then US said that it will review India's GS GSP status, which now it has withdrawn. And in retaliation to this, India had said that it will also impose retaliatory tariffs on the imports coming from US. So this is something that is resulting in a long trade standoff. Also, you should know that previously with regards to solar panels, a case was what was fought in the WTO, which the US won. US has time and again been criticizing India's pharma industry 
for the for the restrictions in trade that india is imposing so visibly all of these issues there is definitely an irritation irritant between india and us especially with a we trade so that is something that has been analyzed here next what has been discussed is with regards to the american industries now here you should know that it is largely the medical and the dairy industries which have raised concerns against india now for india india has said that it has done a lot of steps visibly accommodating the american industries but india says that india's cultural concerns had india has some cultural concerns with the dairy products coming from us and as a result of which india is unable to show much flexibility in that case this is something that has not gone down well with the us clearly and us has withdrawn the gsp status next india has also been criticized for its policies to do with data localization and the fdi rules in e-commerce and that is what has been highlighted by the us president himself so these are some causes of concern now next what becomes important is the impact of this now this impact is what has been downplayed by the ministry of commerce it has said that the benefit that india was getting under gsp was of in the to the tune of only dollar 190 million even though the trade was of 5.6 billion dollars but the benefit was turning to only 190 million dollars and this is something that is not much and this is what has been highlighted but what is important under impact is that there is going to be impact on the small manufacturers without this relaxation or preferential trade treatment these small industries will not be able to compete with the us goods and these are the ones that are going to get maximum impacted and that is what has been discussed here next what has been highlighted is the room for talks now you should know that even though the status is what has been withdrawn this is something that is not going to come up immediately rather a window period of 6 months is what is available or oh, sorry 60 days is what is available and in the 60 days there is room for india to negotiate with the us if there can be a change of stance so india should try and attempt that is what has been advocated this editorial is largely important in line with wto as a major impo- important topic under wto in, in the gs paper 3 also this becomes important for india us relation you should know that in the past direct questions have been asked with a we trade irritants between india and us so in line of all those sequence of events this is another uh, addition so that is something that makes it important coming to the next article india really needs to enhance its counter terrorism capabilities now this is largely an interview this interview with is with mr sham sharan he was a former uh, foreign secretary and he is a he he is a, a a fellow at the central policy center for policy research now what is important in this particular interview are the are some key words which have been discussed and it is for these key words that i have included them separately the interview is a very good one and i would suggest you all to read the full interview but if there is some shortage of time then at least you should go through these keywords which i have highlighted so coming to the first issue the first analysis in the interview is with regards to the strident public opinion in india now here it has been discussed that the public opinion in india vis-a-vis pakistan is something that is very negative and this is one cause of concern it is important that this public opinion be changed otherwise what is going to happen is that long term india pakistan relations are something that are going to suffer even if government is going to make efforts to de escalate tensions or for that matter in engaging pakistan until and unless public opinion in india is going to change nothing much will be achieved so that is what has been highlighted next what has been analyzed here is with regards to the lowered indian threshold this is a key word which can be replicated now this lowered indian threshold is for the india's response to terror and this is primarily in the backdrop of the escalation ladder which both india as well as pakistan are at present following another thing which has been analyzed in this particular article is with regards to the counter terrorism strategy which is something that is very very important now here largely in the counter terrorism strategy of india which is largely focused is the military response and this is something that we have seen in the aftermath of pulwama attack also but what you should know that this counter terrorism strategy is something that is much beyond than a mere military response and that is what the editorial is largely discussing this is what he has said in his interview it has multiple components and these other components include enhancing intelligence capabilities neutralizing targets better standard of standard operating procedures for security forces better technology and some diplomatic maneuvers which are also a part of the counter terrorism strategy next what has been highlighted here is with regards to the role of governance and this is one important analysis here the editorial is saying that 
at present at the LOC we have drug trafficking. Now what happens is that if drug trafficking is still there at the LOC then definitely there is scope for terrorists to come into India. So it is not only about the military and the politics in Pakistan and India. What is important is that a role of governance be recognized that governance in the LOC areas is something that should be apt to ensure that such kind of episodes do not repeat and that is what is important. Next what has been highlighted is the international response. Now this is vis-a-vis -vis China, Russia as well as vis-a-vis -vis US. Now here the editorial is discussing that like any other country, even India probably would have done the same. Every country is interested in seeing its own interests before the interests of another country. And this is what all these countries are doing. For China, the importance is of, the, is of China Pakistan Economic Corridor, which is a part of the Belt and Road Initiative. So pa China is definitely in the favor of Pakistan. Russia, as we all know, is trying to maintain a neutral relationship because Russia is a little irritated, agitated because of the warming India-US relation. Also for US, the role of Pakistan is important in the Afghan policy. So as a result of all these issues, the international response is somehow muted. That is what has been analyzed. Next, what is important is the comparison that has been drawn between India and Pakistan. Now here the discussion here is that the gap between India and Pakistan is something that is widening. Pakistan is going downhill in its economy and whereas India is on a rise and this comparison is some as a result of which a comparison between the two countries is something that should not be done. Rather a balance between them is something that cannot be achieved and Pakistan in trying to attempt to damp India's progress or for that matter hurt India has large, largely dug its own grave is what has been analyzed. Next, which is what has been discussed in the interview and which is something that is very, very important is the role of media. Time and again, I'm telling you that in the articles vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan, the role of media will become very important. A term like mass hysteria is what has been used. This is a key word. Media has resulted in creation of a mass hysteria. There is a need for a reasoned debate in such kind of situation, which the media doesn't welcome. If anybody is giving a different opinion than what the media wants to sell, then the media is quick enough to tag people as anti-national and non-patriotic. -patriot and this is what is being criticized here that the media has no responsibility of doing such activities and that is what is the criticism. Next what has been analyzed here is with regards to the change in policy. There is definitely a change in policy and we had discussed this yesterday also though briefly that it was Vajpayee ji's policy which involved empowering of regional parties, it, improved, it involved involving separatist leaders and engaging with Pakistan and this is one policy that has been completely changed. This policy of Mr. Vajpayee is something that was followed by Dr. Singh also but now in the Modi regime this is something that has been changed and that is a cause of worry. Next what has been discussed here is with regards to the periods of peace. Now here the editorial is saying that the military can only buy a small periods of peace and it is important that whenever the military is doing this job it is imperative that the political leaders solve matters politically. But what is happening is that in these periods of peace also there is no step taken towards solving the core issues vis-a-vis -vis Kashmir and that is what is a cause of concern and this is something that the government has to focus again on that the military if buys us some time of peace in this particular region then the government has to be proactive, proactive to solve these political issues. Next what has been discussed is the issues vis-a-vis -vis the people at LOC. Now these people are the ones who are suffering the most in this particular dispute. These people have a miserable life is what has been discussed and what is important is that in concern for these people some resolutions is what is taken by both the countries. Better governance is what is given to them. Trade is what is encouraged between both the countries so that life of these people is something if that is improved, these people, like all others, are also equal citizens of India and their rights are also as important as all other citizens. So that is something that we can uh, conclude from this particular interview. This interview gives us some practical points which we can use in answers. So that is why I have discussed it. Now that's all for today's discussion. I thank you all for watching the video.